We're gonna we're gonna get one this time. Oh dude, man, are you okay? <laughs> we got her, I think, didn't we? We got her. So we're back in Transform Gym again. We're gonna go through an upper body session. We're gonna do push today. So that's chest, shoulders, and a bit of triceps. So follow me, let's get it going. So a really good conversation with a guy then. He was telling me, training, like having a shower or having sex. And I just laughed at him. And if you understand that mindset, you know, innit? When you have a good training session, you feel really good from it, and you never regret it. Can't say that about sex. Some you may regret, but you never regret a shower, do you? <laughs> I'm gonna do an incline bench, so I'm just gonna do some warm ups first, then we're gonna get into the session. Tell me I'm garbage, I'm going through something, that's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression, it's all that I wanted. The phone you're doing your training, I'm not sure if you have a focus of your training sessions, but when I do plans, I typically have a focus or the main focus of the, of the session, and that's to target the bigger muscles first and do your big compound lifts, and then go into your smaller muscles, like maybe your shoulders, and finish off with triceps. Some people like to split it up a little bit differently. I like to tag arms in at the end. You don't really need a lot of work your arms. Especially when you're working your chest and your tr shoulders because you get quite a lot of triceps and stuff like that involved anyway. In gyms these days, is people don't really think about what they're doing when they're training. You need to connect and engage your muscle and your mind. There was a study done where they measured muscle development on somebody and strength development when somebody wasn't actually training versus somebody training. Someone who was intentionally trained, um, intently focusing on their muscle development actually showed signs of muscle growth just by contracting alone and not actually lifting any weights. So just by intently focusing on contracting the muscles and contracting the muscles, you can get, well, not just by thinking about it, but actually contracting it and not actually training and thinking about it, you can get muscle development. This is a tip, especially for beginners, but maybe for some of you advanced guys that have been training for, for quite a long time, but not quite seeing the results of the development that you want in your training. I tend to focus a lot around isolating muscles. So you learn about your body. Try to learn to isolate different parts of your body while you're doing the exercise. When I do a chest press, especially my warm sets, what I'll tend to do is, at the beginning phase of the movement, I will pause at the bottom of the rep and I'll fully contract the muscle and then I'll drive my elbows together and focus on contracting the muscle. I'm repeating that process you're gonna find a world of pain in that. And you're gonna find your chest just get so much more work done. It engages more in the exercise and you're gonna get a lot more blood and more recruitment in there. Me, I'm garbage, I'm going through something, that's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression, it's all that I wanted. The phone and affection, I summon and dub it. Cause check out problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems. I solve them, I run through the money, the press will be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage, I'm going through something, that's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression, it's all that I wanted. The phone and affection, I summon and Plate loaded, I like using the plate machines opposed to like, you know, the stack. Just get a different feel. You tend to feel the weight a lot more through the movement. Especially towards the top end, it keeps resistance on. This is a great one as well because the movement pattern comes in. Just as you do with your chest, with the elbow on the outside, you drive it in. And it keeps attention towards the top end. I seem to lack a little bit towards top chest, so it's where I spend a lot of my time on my chest workouts. Is Trying to create more of a thicker square of chest. Yeah, I did be the pie. I'ma give all of my people a portion to build them a fortune on flipping the ride. I can't be mixy when iffy the vibe. And 40 on 50 is really the time. Why is you all on my phone like you want me? Like you wasn't pushing the kick to the side. I don't know if you thinking I'm blind. Cross on my crosses and dot on my eyes. Done with your efforts, I'm dealing with pressures. I know it's a lesson that's worth it the while. Bodybuilding being the best form or version of building muscle, you know. Guys in the lead, or leaders of building muscle in the industry. So it's, it makes sense to mimic what a lot of these guys do. Now it's very easy to get into the point where you're sort of chasing weight all the time. Now to build muscle, there's obviously a massive element that you've got to lift heavy weights. Hypertrophy is a case of, or split into, overloading the muscle, mechanically generating a lot of force, metabolically overloading the muscle. So they're the three elements of uh, hypertrophy. We obviously know there's got to be a massive amount of force production when you overload the muscle. And, and get enough weight on it. But at the same time, if you're chasing the weight all the time and not feeling the connection with the muscle, you're sort of wasting it. When you're doing a lot more higher rep movements, you know, it can, it can start to hurt and stuff. It can burn, it, you know, it, you fatigue and all the rest. But one thing you want to maintain, you want to try to make every exercise as hard as possible. Now you can do that with lifting heavy, but that's not always going to guarantee that you're going to work the dominant muscle that you want to work. So, I often recommend not always going to the heaviest you can lift. Maybe drop that load 
20%, even on some exercise like machine work, maybe even 40% and really feel your way into the exercise. It's a bit like what I was saying before in terms of engaging the muscle to start with. Make sure you switch the muscle on fully and then squeeze through the movement. When you start to squeeze through the movement, you really engage the muscle in that movement pattern and you'll get to feel the exercise. And by doing that, you're working the muscle and taking it to its failure in a, in a more better light. Then as you start to increase weight over time, initiate less as you'll automatically start to initiate it and you become more advanced with that movement. It just becomes second nature that you're able to isolate your muscles very efficiently. And that's the level you want to get to. When you get into that point, you want to make the exercise as more difficult as possible. And that's where you can engage in things like tempo, where you control the speed of the exercise. It's the difference between punching through a chest press opposed to squeezing through a chest press. Same with shoulder pressing or any sort of pulling movement. So just bear in mind, when you're trying to build muscle, you want to try to make the exercise as difficult as possible. Whether that's increasing load, whether that's controlling the speed of the exercise, whether that's focusing more on contracting the muscle, or even having enforced reps, drop sets, forced negatives, and all the rest. The aim is to fatigue the muscle, and it's also to, in a sense, destroy the muscle. If you don't want to do this every single time, you obviously want to make sure you can adequately recover so that you can keep progressing in your training as well. All right? People tend to do a lot of isolated movements when it comes to developing your arms, curls and push downs and stuff. But in all honesty, some of the best exercises you can do to develop bigger arms is all your compound lifts. Narrow bench press is an absolutely brilliant one for building triceps. Key tip for it is obviously to try to keep your elbows in line with your shoulders so you have a nice straight path, opposed to allowing them to flare out. Okay, so keeping that narrow grip. The closer your elbows are to your body, the more tricep you work. Keep your arms nice and narrow and follow that straight line of path. The Smith machine is a great underutilized movement. I think exercise, some people sort of like compare it to bench press and stuff like that and think it's, uh, it's, it's inferior, but I think it's massively, massively high up there on my top uh, machines to use. You know, you can utilize it in many different ways, but it helps to stable the rest of the body so the smaller muscles around the joints aren't having to work. So you can mainly focus and isolate those bigger muscle groups and just get some direct work to them. You know, one of the best movements to do build biceps is a pull-up, where people think doing curls all day long is better. So that's why I always recommend doing a lot of, you know, narrow grip benching or even like uh, tricep dips. It's the best movement you can do. Gonna finish off now with some cable rope tricep kick max or push downs however you want to sort of articulate it but essentially with this one as well i often see people getting it wrong or cheating too much by allowing their elbows to, to travel forward when i do this one a key thing is to not let the, ro the, um, the load dictate the actual exercise movement so you're going to make sure you can get a nice big kick out on the bottom end of the movement and always try and keep your elbows pinned to your waist. So not letting them travel too far forward because you're taking away from the triceps here. The triceps are gonna be, work the best when it's nice and narrow to the body, isolated, and you can really kick it out and lock it in. Now this is a really good one to do if you can get two long ropes and you can really open it out and stretch it out. But if you've only got one rope, still get a good movement out of it. Let's give it a go.
push workout done. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got some good tips from it. Please like and share. Comment below. If you've got any questions at all or anything you'd like to see in the next episode, let me know. Don't forget to follow us on the social channels and we'll see you again soon. Don't forget, hit that notification bell and stay up to date.